deal of time, so let's get right to it. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. At last, Kate and I have managed to set up a meeting with Rusty Walker. Oh. The kid you love to hate. Bad boy of tennis. So he's finally agreed to an interview, huh? Well, not exactly, but he did agree to a meeting. It's a start. See if you can find a nice side. Uh -huh. How long would you like us to keep looking? <laughs> <laughs> Pete and Jennifer, I like that idea you submit. You do? We pull this shot from the files. Margaret Davis, Queen of the Soaps. Soap opera. America has grown up watching her, and this week is the 35th anniversary of another day. You know the words out? They're doing that broadcast live. Valerie Beaumont, TV's number one villainette, and its hottest team of young lovers. Three generations of stars, and how Margaret's been there through all the changes. That's your story. I'm uh, glad you like it, sir. Uh, sex and health, Shelley. I didn't receive an outline on your column this week. I have a very interesting, and if I say so myself, potentially provocative idea, Mr. Hardwick. However, I'm weighing the approach. It's a delicate topic. Which area, health or sex? The three-letter one. All right, well, give me 10 minutes and I'll uh, drop by your office and say what uh, <laughs> What do I know about soap opera? Look, I sent a memo. I've got us an assignment Mr. Hardwick loves. What more could you want? A little advance notice. Hmm. How about a preview of coming attraction, Shelley? What's the article all about? Your first time. For what? You know. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. I thought I'd interview celebrities about their first, you know. Mm -hmm. Something tells me you're going to need a little practice on this one. You're right. Mm -hmm. And I thought I could start right here with the staff at Glitter. Mm -hmm. Clive. Oh, no, oh, no. Don't get me involved in this one. Oh, just to help me zero in on what kind of questions to ask, how to phrase them, please. All right. I was very mature for 15. 15? You were a minor. Well, that's okay. We weren't drinking. Advantage Walker. And with set scores of 6-2, 4-6, and now 5-4, this point could decide the match. Deuce. Are you blind? That was out. It was a foot away. Oh, give me a break. Where do they get these guys? It was a foot away. That was out. What did I miss? What did they say? Well, he certainly lived up to his reputation. That was a match point. Mr. Walker, please resume play or I'll have to assess a fine. Great, fine me. I don't care what it costs. Even a Mickey Mouse tournament should be run by judges who know what they're doing. gonna be fun. Think you can handle it? Talking about it's a piece of cake. I'll just fall back on my years of experience and uh, of course use a whip and a chair. Like everybody else. Uh, Kate Simpson from Glitter Magazine. 
I'm Sam Dillon. We're uh, scheduled for an appointment for an interview. Well, you'll have to interview each other. Not a good day for me. Not a good day? Why not? You won your first match? Anybody think I wouldn't? I guess not. Not even you, right? Okay, there's your story, right? I'm a cocky, egocentric maniac. Uh -huh. Look. That's the story every other magazine has, and frankly, we don't buy it. I'm gonna go get some lunch. Join me if you want. I see. Good guy, bad guy, huh? That was nicely done. Well, I'm learning from a master. You hungry? Ethel, you can't do this to me. What is it this time, Margaret? You know perfectly well what it is. Look. I am supposed to do. I'm the producer. I know what's on the page. Just hit your marks and read your lines. That's what we're paying you to do. You hate me, don't you? You're still blaming me for stealing Arnold from you, my second husband. It was Roger, your third. And you didn't steal him from me. I gave him to you. You deserved each other. So this is the way you finally get your revenge. You are a cruel woman, Ethel Woodley. A cruel, heartless woman. She has a point. Well, let's get on with this rehearsal. Um, uh, Misty, Eric, let's pick it up from your love scene. Please, Aunt Cornelia will be back any time now. What about your wife? It's not the same with her. Hmm. They'll never be the same again. And I still can't get this soap opera stuff straight. Okay, now who's having the affair with the guy that turns out to be her nephew? That's the daughter of the doctor who had the stroke but won't tell anyone because he still wants to operate? Stop the rehearsal. There are intruders on the set. Us? Oh, was there a sign on the door? Was it legible? Can you read? Uh, it said close set, but we... And that's exactly what it meant. Uh, I think the producer's expecting us. We're from Glitter? Glitter magazine. Why, you're those wonderful people that we've been expecting. Oh, Jennifer, Douglas, and Pete. Uh... Bozak. You must be the producer? Guilty. Ethel Woodley. Oh, you must understand, we just can't be too careful. There's spies from other shows everywhere, trying to scoop every twist and turn we take. Oh, but please, come and meet everyone. Everyone, a glitter has arrived. Now, as you know, they're here to cover our little family as another day steams into its 36th year. Now, anything they want is theirs. Just clear it with me first. Uh, we'd really like to interview you all. Uh, starting with Margaret Davis. She's off it's today. Nappy. Oh, well, she's here, but she's indisposed. Oh, studying her lines or something. Maybe tomorrow. In the meantime... Oh. oh, oh, but this is Valerie Beaumont. And perhaps you could start... That toad of a writer. That scotch swilling hack has gone too far this time. He actually wants me to face the mirror and say, My! I look fat as a horse today. It's him or me, Ethel. Him or me. Or you. Hello. Uh, Valerie, darling, I want you to meet the reporters from Glitter. They're here to cover our historic live telecast. Was that line reading about the right level, or should I have put more punch into Scotch swilling hack? Uh, Valerie's just practicing her speech. Uh, oh, she plays Daisy Bailey, the wickedest woman in Fair Oaks. Uh, sometimes she stays in character all day. As I was saying, we'd really like to start with Miss Davis. Margaret? Are you sure that absolutely she's... Absolutely unavailable. Absolutely. Very absolutely. Hey, how do you feel about the new computer training approach at tennis? I don't know. What about Wimbledon? You rated your opponent yet? Not yet. Okay. Look, you just won your first match. You'll probably win the finals. Bet on it. 
I will. You got several sports cars. You got a big house with a video arcade, I understand. You got women falling at your feet. How do you, how do you deal with that? How do you feel about it? You know, some people might say you got it made. You could say that. Why do I get the feeling that you don't like giving interviews? Press people are always asking dumb questions, like that one. Listen, pal, some people feel the press made you. No, I made me. Five o'clock in the morning, I was out there hitting tennis balls against the garage door, working, helping out around the house, earning money for my family, and then going out and hitting for three or four more hours. The press wasn't there then. No fancy clubs, no high-priced tennis coaches? Not until later, when everybody started jumping on the bandwagon. People trying to build their success on my work, people like you. Any more questions? I've got to get back in the court. Yeah, I got a question. You obviously worked hard to get where you are. You paid your dues, didn't you? Aren't you a little bored trying to maintain that bad boy image of yours? Who says it's just an image? Lucy? It's Carolyn. Carolyn Mason? Sure, I remember. How are you doing? It's good to see you, but... Listen, uh, we need to talk. It's real important. Well, it's gonna have to wait, but give me your phone number and I'll call you. I said it's important. Gary, are you all right, sweetheart? Yes. It's your son? Yes. You want to finish this interview by yourself or what? Sure, if I can keep him in one place long enough. Rusty! Listen, I'm sorry, but there was no other way. I tried to call you, but I didn't know where. I wrote letters and they came back. So I bought some money and came in from Seattle just to... Just Rusty, friend. I swear, that child is your son. Writers, reporters, you know, we're having a hard time getting them to talk to us. Great. Hi. Are we going home now? I don't know, honey. Listen, um, would you like a cup of coffee or some chance to talk? Kate, you... Is that okay? Uh, hi, my name is Sam Dillon. How are you? What's your name? Gary Mason. <laughs> Gary Mason, I love that name. Look, you want some ice cream? Do you know that this club happens to have the best double scoop of chocolate fudge ripple in the hemisphere? I happen to be an expert. You want some? Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about him. Sam's great with kids. You know, that little guy is my whole world right now. Listen, I don't want to make a big fuss in the papers or anything. I just want to talk to Rusty, see what we can work out. I really need someone to talk to. Well, I'm a good listener. Terrific. <laughs> okay. Terrific. <laughs> their first time. I remember my first time. You do? I was 12. What? Well, Eddie, my next door neighbor and I, we snuck out really late one night in summer. He was 13. I thought he was very mature. Apparently he was. Well, anyway, we bought sandwiches and sodas and we went out to my backyard and sat and watched the moon. We were both kind of nervous at first, but we felt the time was right. So we did it. You did it? Mm -hmm. That was my first kiss. Your first kiss? Can you use that? I'll let you know. So how's your ice cream? Good. You ever been to a tennis match before? No? No. How about football? Ice hockey? Uh, 
now. Cinema and TV is all. Oh, TV, huh? What else you like to do besides watch TV? Mm, I like T-ball. T-ball, really? That's a great game. My son used to like that. How old is he? Oh, he's just a couple years older than you are. Do you take him to baseball games? Well, yeah, I, um... Actually, not as much as I'd like. He lives up in San Francisco, you see, and, uh... You know, dads can't always see their kids as often as they'd like. If they want to, they can. playing a tennis match at our school. There was something about him. All that hurt he has, you know? Yes, I know. Well, we went out a couple of times and got kind of serious about each other. <laughs> All my girlfriends kept pushing me to go to bed with him so I could tell him what it was like with a sports star. Back then, I, I didn't know what it was like with anybody. <laughs> I don't think they did either. felt like I was the only girl my age in the whole world who hadn't... Well, you know... made love. And I didn't have anyone to really talk to about it. I couldn't discuss sex with my mother, so... And then what happened? Well, <laughs> the tennis circuit moved on, and that was that. And that's when you found out you were pregnant? Yeah, but by then, I didn't know where Rusty was. I thought I could handle it alone, and I did for a few years. But... It's so hard doing it alone. I recommend this job 20 years ago. Margaret, I don't know what you're talking about. Ours is a professional relationship. What about my contract? I told you. We'll talk. That is what you've been saying for weeks. We'll talk. We'll talk. We never talk. Uh, Miss Davis? Yes? Hello, we're reporters from Glitter Magazine. Reinforcements. Please come in. Oh, uh, won't you sit down? Okay. <laughs> you must help me. The power of the press is possibly the only thing that can. I am in great personal danger. Danger? <laughs> They're trying to kill me. Have you called the police? Why, do they do rewrites now? Huh? Oh, you mean they're trying to kill Cornelia. My character, Cornelia Winthrop, the first lady of Fair Oaks for 35 years. Kill her, they might as well kill me. That character is my, is my career, my best friend. My life. I don't know where I would go, what I would do without her. Oh, my mother will be crushed. She just loves you. Why would they want to bump you off? They say it's ratings. Some young network hotshot quotes research saying, young audiences only want to watch young actors. They'd rather hear about pimples than menopause. So off I go so they can sell more toothpaste than Flemish cream. Well, we certainly sympathize, Miss Davis, but I'm not exactly sure how we can help. You can write about it. My fans won't tolerate it. They're loyal. They're old, but loyal. Uh, just how is it that you, uh, die, sweetheart? The word is die, even for television characters. Page 26. Note the stage direction. And Cornelia drives off in the car little knowing that the brake lines were severed. But it, it doesn't say that you crash. It doesn't say that I don't. My contract is up tomorrow. Tune in next week.
thinking about Caroline. She really loves that little boy of hers. Yep, I'm sure she does. So she latches onto a tennis star with a healthy bank account. Happens all the time. Oh, come on, Sam. You don't honestly believe she's like Kate, that. Kate, I can only deal with the facts, you know, not some girl's fantasy. What's that supposed to mean? You think I'm taking sides, losing my journalistic objectivity? I don't know what to think. You know what I think? I think I don't like the kid in the middle of all this. I think I don't like me in the middle of all this. A good reporter should be, uh, I don't know, a little cold, a little detached, like a surgeon. No, Sam. A good reporter cares about people. You're a good reporter and you're a good father. A divorce does not make you any Leave less... it out, will you? It's got nothing to do with okay. this. Burning the 9 o'clock oil? Oh, hi, Shelley. I wonder if I could ask you two a simple little question. Shoot. Do you remember your first time? You have to be putting me on, right? Could we do this uh, another time, Shelley? Shelley, why don't you practice on me? Oh, that's really nice of you, Kate. All right. Now, let's see. My first time. I was on board an ocean liner with the New York Yankees, bound for ports unknown. You're kidding. Anyway, that was some cruise, Shelley. Hi, sweetheart. Sit down. Yeah. No, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't call to talk to mommy. No, I, I just want to say how you are. <laughs> Did you play ball on Sunday? You're kidding me. David, that's terrific. A single, that's... Yeah, I... I wish I could have been there, too. Look, I'm going to try to get up this weekend, okay? Are you playing then? Good. Um, okay, you take good care of yourself, all right? And take care of Mommy, too. I love you, too. Bye-bye. Listen, uh... If I came down a little hard on you yesterday, I apologize. This whole uh, paternity thing isn't going to be in the article, is it? No, I don't think so. It's not the magazine style. Because it's not my kid, anyway. But you knew Carolyn, though, didn't you? Yeah, a long time ago. Was she, uh, special? What do you want me to say? Yes, she was special. Yes, we slept together. You just tell me what you want me to say and whip out your little tape recorder. But the fact is, I have met a lot of girls, and some of them I would have liked to have known better. Long. Carolyn was one of them. But if you want tennis, at least the way I want tennis, there are certain things that other people take for granted that you have to give up. Like children, relationships, family. You learn to make choices. A kid is the last thing I need. Everyone makes choices. You're not the only one. The important thing is to uh, try to make the right ones. I suppose if you're a child yourself, it's a little difficult to even think about uh, taking the responsibility for another child. You about done with this interview, because I am. Yep, I'm done. Thirty-five years is a long time. I remember when I first bought this sofa. Yes. You were having a relationship with the owner of Phelps Fine Furniture before you discovered his last three wives had died mysterious deaths. Those were the happy times. Uh, couldn't you check next week's script and find out what's in store for Cornelia? No one knows what happens next week. No one but Ethel Woodley. And the writer. Ah, but he is her brother-in-law. 
the only person in town more tight-lipped than Ethel. Surely someone has a copy of the upcoming scripts. Only our beloved producer. The originals go straight to her office, and she guards them like government secrets. No one is talking to me. Agents, directors, the rest of the cast. They all sense the end is near. I fear Cornelia Winthrop is as good as dead. And nobody in Fair Oaks will mourn her passing. don't usually keep me waiting. I know how this looks, but I had no choice. I'm watching Derry for a couple of hours while Caroline goes out on a job interview. I thought if you didn't mind, he could play outside while we talk. As long as it's you and not that Dylan character. Cars tend to uh, speed along the street, so it might be safer if you hang around inside. Come on in. I really didn't know what else to do. You said this was your only free time. You want a soda or something? No, thank you. I have a photographer standing by at your convenience. I'm sure that our readers would love to see some shots of your house. It's beautiful. Whatever. Yeah. That outside? For you. Oh, thank you. Hello? Right now? Well, it's just that I'm in the middle of a... Yes, I understand. I understand, but I'm not sure that Mr. Walker will. All right, right away. We have an emergency back at the office. More apologies. Can we come back in a half an hour? I've had more organized interviews in my career. <laughs> so have I. Look, if uh, you're only going to be half an hour. Yes? The, the kid can stay with me. Is that all right with you? Mm-hmm. All right, I won't be long. Tennis? No. You want to learn? I've got a court right out back. No. Okay with me, pal. I'm not your pal. You got me there. Are you my father? In you in a moment. of the house. Strawberry ice cream soda. So, are you my dad or not? Hey, look, kid. My name's Gary. Right. Gary. Did your mother tell you to ask me that? No. Look, I don't know how to explain this all to you. What does your mother say? She doesn't say much. She cries mostly. So it is real good. You don't know what you're missing. You like it? It's pretty good, I guess. I'm not real thirsty. You know, this whole thing, this whole thing has nothing to do with you. Do you understand that? No. Next week's script, except the writer and me. 
Uh, well, we only ask, Mrs. Woodley, because we'd like our article to be up to date as we roll the presses. Even Glitter will have to wait to find out, like the rest of the world. What if we could offer you a cover story? Even I know you can't promise me that. Well, thank you, anyway. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, no, let me uh, help you. No, 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 I'll help you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I don't want to seem hard-lined about this, but secrecy is the very soul of my business. We understand. Now, I really do have to get back to work. Uh, oh, but if there are any more questions that I can answer for you, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. Bye. What now? Oh, I uh, suggest we go back to the office. What for? All right. I could have seen Gary's face when I picked him up. I never should have left him with Rusty. Uh, nothing's going to get through to this guy. You all through, Jack? Listen, Clive wants a contact by five, if you can. Thanks very much. Well, Sam, I guess we're through. Well, I'm not. Rusty, what's with you, Dylan? Can't you take no for an answer? I have nothing to say to you. I have something to say to you. Like what? Like, uh, I admire what you've accomplished. Get to the point. Okay. The point is the kid. Why does he frighten you so much? Why does a six-year-old child scare you? Scared? You're not scared? Why don't you do this? Why don't you take a blood test? That way, you'll know for sure. If the results are negative, you can walk away with a clear conscience. Hey, you care so much. Okay, set it up. It's no big deal because I know it's not my kid. No big deal, huh? You amaze me. I'm beginning to think you're right because even if he is your kid, it's not going to make any difference, is it? not have the entire world know that I'm here. Just uh, Pete Bozak and uh, Jennifer Douglas. Certainly. Oh, it's just that, well, I've followed another day since you survived your third coma. My third coma? Which means you missed the first 25 years. Well, I'm only 21. Oh, of course. So young, so young. Uh, could you manage to locate... Mr. Bozak and Miss Douglas. Sure. You wanted to see me, Mr. Hardwick? I've been waiting for a memo on your column. Well, sir, I, uh... <clears throat> it seems a little more difficult than what I thought. In fact, I'm thinking of abandoning it. Maybe you just haven't found the right angle on it. Can I help? No. I mean, uh... It's just that the topic is a little, uh... Well, I, I've been trying it out on the staff. Why don't you try it out on me? You? Please. Well... <clears throat> Do you remember your first... My first? My first one. to the drawing board.
Hello, darling. I'm sorry I couldn't make it home for dinner. But I was just sitting here thinking about you. And they closed the lid on Cornelia's casket and on another page of Fair Oaks history. A page? Cornelia Winter was the entire book. Oh, it's hopeless. I'm not bruised, I'm not hospitalized, I'm buried. She really can't wait to get rid of me. Can't just be the ratings. Why, you're an institution, a soap opera dinosaur. Well, thank you, my dear. No matter how that came out, I'm sure you meant well. You know, my agent thinks they've run out of stories for me. As Cornelia, I've murdered, maimed, married, sinned, repented, lusted. Hmm. Maybe we really have run out of all of the really good things. But Cornelia has always been a survivor. There must be a way. No. No, I'm a broken woman. Tomorrow, I shall be killed live in front of millions and millions of viewers. Happy anniversary, Cornelia. We're really very sorry. Please, no pity. Cornelia hates pity. She's always been a winner. But if Cornelia goes, she goes down swinging. Our friendly neighborhood reporters told you I took a blood test. Should have literally for the results. They're picking them up while I play my final match this afternoon. Well, Gary doesn't have much to do in that motel room, so I, I thought I'd let him play here. He's having fun. There was no one else? No one I cared about. No one like you. Rusty, I hated to see you go, but I understood. And it's important to me that you understand. If it turns out that you could be his father, I'm not expecting us to fall in love or anything. What we had was then. All I care about now is my son. Carolyn. Listen, if you could just have some time for me. He needs a daddy. Oh, this is such a thrill. The longest running soap on television and still going strong. That makes us happy, and it makes our sponsor happy, too. Right, Paul? Right, Uncle. <laughs> Coming out of commercial. I can't believe we're live and everything's going so well. We're alive again in five, four, three, two. lines have been severed. Where is she? I sent her to the store. That evil old woman has interfered with my plans for the last time. We'll never see her again. Cornelia, what are you doing here? Someone has tampered with my brakes, but I managed to steer the car into a hedge and survive. Someone is trying to kill me. What does Margaret think she's doing? That's not in the script. There's nothing I can do. We're alive. Oh, after today, there's no way anyone can do me harm. Is this, is this the same script you gave me? Uh, go to commercial. We just came out of commercial. Sound effects. I get ready with a gunshot. Oh, we'll kill the broad off that way. Right. Yes, things will be different. I'll see you every day, check on your whereabouts, and you 
And folks like you will never receive one penny of my money. That's what you think. Take this. But you can't. I have... I have more to do. Ethel, you promised me a surprise, and you came through. This is a great show. We aim to please. Cornelia's dad? You killed Aunt Cornelia. Uh... Dad, Dad. Uh -huh. Don't count her out too fast. Over there. Never say a word of this to anyone. Just forget it ever happened. Good idea. We'll pretend that she died in that car crash. Two minutes to final credits. We're home free. Don't answer that! No. No? Amelia. Cornelia's sister. Brilliant. Brilliant, Miss Woodley. Absolutely inspired. Yes, we can see why you wanted to keep it a secret. Now Margaret will run another 35 years. Lucky us. show that uh, he couldn't possibly be Gary's father. I guess I misjudged him. I guess Caroline made a couple of mistakes in her past. <laughs> you know, I really, uh, I think she thought he was the one. What do you think she'll do now? Oh, she'll probably keep looking for a job, I guess. She doesn't want charity. The one I'm really worried about is Gary, though. He really needs a father. Show me a kid that doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Congratulate the winner or not? Sooner or later. Might as well be sooner. I can hardly wait. Rusty? Good game. Congratulations. Where are Carolyn and the kid? They were here earlier. We uh, thought maybe you better take a look at the test results first. Did you take this down to the locker room? Gary, this all okay with you? Teach me to play tennis? He's mine, all right. <laughs> well, so much for the bad boy of tennis angle. That's all right. I like this story much better. Very 
soon you will meet with an old comrade in arms. Gene Horner? Well, I haven't seen you in over 30 years. <laughs> Next, on Glitter. Oh, yes, uh, how about some pictures? Uh, no, 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 absolutely not. I don't want my fans to see me this way. I want them to remember me as I was. You can't wander around your house by yourself. What are you I thinking told about? What are you thinking about? not quite right here. This is David Hartman. Tomorrow reports on the meeting between Andre Gromyko and President Reagan. Also, how to pick the right movies for your children to see. And Jessica Lang and Howard Rollins on Good Morning America. Sunday following Ripley's Believe It or Not, Mark hits the bright lights and gambling casinos of Atlantic City to get his long-lost father out of the biggest jam of his life on Hardcastle and McCormick. Then Mary Tyler Moore and James Garner star in Heart Sounds, a special presentation of the Sunday night movie.